Wakey wakey, Doki. Welcome back to Review with Dri. By the way, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. We're on to the last master list, biology. Re, bakit last na? May verbal pa di ba? Chaka yung perceptual acuity at chaka inductive reasoning. Dokis for those subtests, we don't need a master list, okay? Those are skills based. So for verbal, you just have to master speed reading as well as increase your vocabulary. It also helps if you read a lot of passages just in case they come up, okay? And then for your inductive reasoning and perceptual acuity, they're basically just an IQ test. So you just have to practice your testmanship. Going back, biology, just like social science, can feel wildly different depending on your academic background. Now, you're gonna feel either one of two things. First, if you came from a traditional pre-med course like bio or medtech, then this might feel like just a walk in the park, okay? But number two, if you're coming from a non-trad pre-med course, or it's been a hot minute since you've held a microscope, it's still gonna be like a walk in the park. Pero sabi nga nila, Jurassic Park. <laughs> And then we turn it up a notch. When the park is on fire, you're on fire and everything is on fire. And personally, I was the second one. Even if I came from a trad pre-med course, like Shams, gun to my head, recall zoology, recall botany, the gun will go off. I die. My god. But calma lang. It's not really hard concept-wise, but the entire biology subtest is very content heavy. Just like your Soksai, Bio has an allocated four-year bachelor's degree. So it's a very wide range of topics. Which is why I made this master list just for you, Dokis. Para you know exactly what to study. Let's go! First and foremost, we have general biology. For this, you have to recall your levels of organization. If you can remember, we have their cells, and then your tissues, and then organs, organ systems, and up to your organisms. And then it extends pa. Brush up on that. Of course, hindi mawawala si mitochondria sa powerhouse of the cell. Okay? So we have here this cell theory. Another one is the structures and their functions, basically the organelles. So yung question sa hindi exactly mitochondria is a powerhouse of the cell, but you get the gist. We also have the difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Another thing is your cellular division or your reproduction. We have the stages of cell cycle, if you can remember IPMAT, right? Interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And then differences between your mitosis and meiosis. Another thing, cellular processes. We have here your cell communication. Here we have uh, chemical signaling, electrical signaling, and other spa. You also have your membrane transport, if you could recall, active versus passive, and they all have subtypes as well. And then your cellular respiration. You have here your aerobic versus anaerobic. And yung mga subtypes sila. Ito talaga nagigigil talaga ako. Tung isang best friend ko. Crab cycle. Okay? It's under your cellular respiration, along with your electron transport chain. You know, guys, I think talaga yung totoong crab cycle is that you. Memorize it, and then you forget it. And then you memorize it again, and then you forget it again. And then you memorize it, and then you forget it. Oh my god. Next. Cellular tonicity. We have here your hypotonic, isotonic, hypertonic, as well as what it's called, and how it differs between your animal cells and plant cells. Okay, it's called differently in your plant cells. Lastly, we have your taxonomy for gen bio. If you can remember your Linnaean classification system, Right? Your domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, as well as your binomial nomenclature. Basically, how you write the scientific name of an organism based on just two things from a Linnaean hierarchy. Just your genus and species, right? And then there's specifications on how you should write it, like if it's italicized, right? Those stuff. Moving on to genetics. Ito, very high yield talaga. Okay, it always comes up in the end, Matt. Favorite to nisame. For some reason. You have your structure of your DNA and RNA. If you could remember, you have there your nitrogenous bases as well as your phosphate sugar backbone. And then we have your Chargaff's rule. Um, brush up on that one. Basically, just 
the fact that the amount of adenine and thymine is equivalent to each other, as well as your guanine and cytosine. We also have your central dogma. Ito talaga, I have like one or two questions from this one. Your replication, transcription, and then your translation. In translation, you also have to take notes of your genetic code as well as your protein synthesis, okay? You have to familiarize your start and stop codons. Another one, we have your genetic mutation. If you could remember, that's um, point mutation as well as your frame shift mutation. We also have your patterns of inheritance. Here, you need to review on your skills with your Ponet square as well as your pedigree or genogram analysis. We have here your Mendelian loss, Mendelian patterns, as well as your non-Mendelian patterns. You also have to familiarize the sample conditions or genetic abnormalities linked with each of the patterns. We also have your other concepts. These are the ones that are emerging in the recent NMAT, and I don't know where exactly to place them or to sing at them in the main topics. So I just made kind of like a random genetic topics here in the other concepts part. We have here your genetic engineering, okay, and your GMOs. And we also have your bacterial genetic transfer, as well as your Hox genes and maternal effect genes. So read on those. Wala namang mawawala if you read on those and it doesn't come up. But if it does come up, then automatic one point. Okay? Moving on to my legit favorite now this time though. It's anatomy and physiology. So for this one, I didn't really study much during my NMAT prep because I was quite satisfied already with my knowledge on this branch of biology. So ipinasa just ko na lahat, okay? <laughs> If you're also in trad pre-med, you could just skim through your notes on this one. But a lot of topics do come out from anatomy and physiology. We have here your types of tissues, if you could remember. Epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissues. You also have your germ layers. Your ectoderm, mesoderm, and your endoderm. Homeostasis, if you could remember your negative and positive feedback loops. So just brush up a bit in those ones. And of course hindi mawawala yung major organ systems natin. Digestive system. Yung labasin dito is your lactose intolerance, okay? I already made a video detailing that one. It was very comprehensive and very easy to grasp. I also included like a story time version. So it's harder to forget. So please do check it out if you haven't yet because, you know, sayang one point. So that's that for your anafi. Moving on to your botany. <laughs> As I said earlier, gun to my head, recall botany, recall zoology, I will die. <laughs> so, ah, tiba tiba dito yung mga bio majors, I swear, they don't need to study anymore at all, I think. So yeah, we have here your major phyla, right? Your major plant groups. We have there your bryophyta, pteridophyta, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. So, start learning about them now. We also have your morphology and anatomy. You have to learn about the parts of the plant, okay, very junior high. Just like your leaves, your root, your fruits, and then your flower. Plant tissues, if you could recall, vascular tissues, such as your xylem and phloem. And then there's also the meristem and permanent tissues. A simple and complex tissues, ganon. For your plant hormones, ito, very suki na sa enmat. You have to recall or start learning about your auxin, cytokinin, gibberellin, etc. Another thing is your physiology. You have to learn about the internal structures of the plant. And then your plant cells, yung mga ganun. And then, of course, photosynthesis. You're light-dependent and then you're light-independent. Woo! Isa pa to, nanggigigil ako sa Calvin cycle. Reproduction. You have here your sexual and asexual. And then there's subtypes. And then lastly, your plant tropisms. What is this? Uh, if you could recall, phototropism, uh, geotropism, etc. That's what that is. What else? My other best friend, zoology. Again, with the reproduction, sexual versus asexual, and then their subtypes, as well as your major animal groups or your major phyla. So, damn, as someone not from bio, this was very overwhelming for me. Don't worry, you don't need to 
learn everything very deeply maybe just skim through it because so far i don't think it's been appearing that much in the end mat but it doesn't hurt to review a bit because if it does make a comeback then at least you'll get the point okay porifera didoria platyhelminthes i wait i'm supposed to give out examples pala oh diba di ko kakabisado to wait check ko muna yung korigo ko hehe <laughs> porifera if you can recall your sponges Nidaria, which are your jellyfish, anemones, ganon. Platyhelminthes, your flatworms. Puro tayo worms ito ngayon sa nematoda, roundworms, anelida, segmented worms. And then your insects and crustaceans, which are part of your arthropoda. Mollusca, which includes snails, clams, and octopuses. Starfish naman at urchins for echinodermata. And then for chordata, it's us, okay? Vertebrates. There you have it. Lastly, we have our ecology. Bam! Okay, so ecology, yung mga questions ito, is not that deep. It's only superficial level. So I did not include subtopics anymore, just the main topics. You have your ecological relationships. If you could remember parasitism, commensalism, chirva chirva, ecovish. Okay, and then you also have your food chain and food web, as well as your organisms that interact in them. Your producers, primary consumers, get on. You also have your energy pyramid, basically just the energy flow, how it differs or how it becomes less when you move from producers all the way to your tertiary consumers. Okay, so ilang energy na lang yung natitira. Ilang kikala na lang yung natitira. You also have your ecological succession. Basically, what kinds of plants would grow through varying time periods, okay? Like example, when the earth was new, there was no life uh, on land just yet. And then as time went by, there's the mosses, the shrubs, the, and then now we have like lots of trees and all that type. Theory of evolution by Charles Darwin. And then your types of biomes. Primarily your terrestrial and aquatic biomes, but they also have their specific branches as well. So you have to read on that. We have your oceanic zones. This is very popular if you could see in the practice test. This usually comes out there. Biogeochemical cycles as well, right? Your carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, water cycle. And then your population dynamics. Basically just your birth rates, death rates, population curves, yung mga ganon. And then lastly, your environmental issues. Um, I think this has been coming up as well in the recent NMAT, like your, what, oil spill, siguro, uh, threat of the invasive species, I think yung mga ganun. And yun lang, that's a wrap on your complete biology master list for the NMAT. Use this video as your study map, check off what you've covered, mark what still needs work, and most importantly, don't waste time on content that won't show up. If this video helped, even just a little, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and maybe even share with your friends. As always, the G Drive is still open, more tutorials are on the way, and I'm just one comment away if you need me. This has been Review with Re, reminding you that the hours you've put in will never amount to nothing. Bye!